after analyzing the top two receivers in this draft, there was one more player that I felt deserved the extra attention. Anthony Miller from Memphis stole my heart faster than Elvis Presley did. The way he sets up his routes and the quickness he brings to the field are easily his best traits. These combined with his intensity and his all-out style of play should endear him to almost every team in this league. If you draft Miller, you are getting an elite slot receiver and a player that will consistently push and fight for every snap on the field. This ability should get him drafted in the second round of this year's draft. In my opinion, if he was only three inches taller, I would honestly bet that he'd be a first round pick this year. In the NFL, there are a few teams that would be a great fit for his skill set. The Bears are one, while the Dolphins are another that recently traded away the best receiver on the roster. Other teams like the Jaguars and the Bills would also be good fits as well. As a prospect, Miller is a great route runner where he uses his speed and footwork in order to get open. He's a high effort player who will keep working until every play is over. For his weaknesses, he doesn't have the best hands unless the ball's outside of his frame. His concentration downfield is definitely higher than in your routine line of work. Also, based on his size, he isn't the best run blocker either. Based on these traits, I gave Miller an early second round grade in this draft. Looking at his tape from Memphis, Miller really impressed me with how he set up his routes. He did a great job sinking his hips in order to create separation, and he has a natural feel for gaps in zone coverage. He also has very tight footwork and can run a full route tree. Miller was a huge factor for Memphis, gaining over 1,400 yards two seasons in a row, and he also had 40 combined touchdowns in college. Now what's even more impressive is that he was actually unrecruited and made the team as a walk-on out of high school. He competed in every situation and absolutely became the focal point of this offense. For example, if you're wondering how Memphis and UCLA with Josh freaking Rosen turned into a shootout, it was all because of Miller. He gained close to 200 yards and was a huge problem for the Bruins defense. Based on my tracking, he was extremely impressive using head fakes to move defenders and how he uses body control to grab balls out of the air. In my opinion, his best fit would be as a slot receiver in the pros where teams can ask him to run choice routes and slot fades in order to maximize his value on the field. Now he does tend to waste some energy by swinging his arms and I think he gets a bit too vertical in his release, but these two negatives don't seem to affect him. He's such a damn good route runner that it clearly doesn't matter. While all this may be the case, Miller's had 21 drops over the last two years. Sure, he did have a ton of targets, but a drop rate of over 10% is way too high. What's kind of interesting is that his issues with drops clearly stem from concentration. When he's attempting to make a routine catch, he'll sometimes lose focus and will double catch or bobble the ball to the ground. However, when the ball is outside of his frame or he has to make a spectacular dive, the same issue is not a problem. He actually made some pretty ridiculous catches at Memphis. Outside of drops though, the other main concern people say about him is his size. It does come up in run blocking for sure, but in my opinion, this is a bullcrap reason to avoid him. Miller was slightly bigger than Antonio Brown coming out, and he's roughly the same size as Odo Beckham and Jarvis Landry. Does he have Julio Jones size? No. What about AJ Green? Of course he doesn't. But you don't need to be 6'4 in order to be a productive player in the NFL. Please do me a favor and ask Tom Cruise and Cuba Gooding Jr., and they'll both definitely agree with me on this one. Now speaking of Jarvis Landry, that is the player I think most closely resembles Anthony Miller. They're both very feisty players, and I always felt like Jarvis Landry should have been picked way earlier than at the end of the second round. They both have great balance, and they both do a great job using their body control in order to make some pretty impressive catches. This offseason, Landry signed a huge $75 million contract. I feel like if Miller is put in the right situation, he can easily make an impact next year. Well, that's all I have for you. As I mentioned in my last two videos, here are my top three receivers currently on my big board. If you want to see my grades on the other eight receivers I've scouted, make sure you follow the link to my Patreon account. Just a $1 month donation will give you access to my full big board and all my grades so far this season. Thanks again for watching, and you can follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.